always a reminder for myself and abdukul ajeez, so da'if, oh miskeen, oh zalim, oh jahad. And but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. We took a path in which to be nothing and alhamdulillah Allah's greatest ni'mat is to guide the servant, guide to the reality of La ilaha illallah and then Allah guides to what Allah loves and opens then the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah As a result then Prophet will guide that servant towards the lovers of that reality and these are the turuqs and the rose gardens of reality and ishq in which they teach humanity how to traverse this path of thorns and this life that we live and that to successfully succeed and to reach the apex of the path which is the presence of the rose and the beautific fragrance of the rose through all the crushings of this physical world and testings and difficulties on how to reach towards that reality. And always a reminder for myself that somebody had asked that, how do you know when something is a test or something is a punishment? And for us we focus with the good and when we clearly know that we are trying our best to do good and life has all of its ups and downs and making good choices, bad choices, better choices. So everything is based on the good for that type of servant. If they're completely in Allah's oceans of anger they don't need to ask that question, they know they're in an ocean of difficulty and turmoil with understandings that every test that comes it's a matter of passing the test so that it doesn't become a punishment and they say that the punishment is a means in which the servant will draw away from Allah's guidance and Allah's Divinely lights. And the test is that which draws them clearer but even more understanding in that reality is that when Allah wants the servant to pass the test they have to be enrolled in the school of how to take a test and that's the great ni'mat and that's the great blessings that God has given to the tariqs. He knows that those path of these people are going to be strenuous but He doesn't just put them into something strenuous without any ability and any training. Those whom are guided towards that reality Allah guides them that go and sit with these people who know and they live a life of testing and they give you the faculties and the abilities and all of the training on how to open your heart, how to sit and contact your heart, how to connect and get the guidance in a time where you feel there is no guidance, all that surrounds you is difficult. They teach of the inner path and the inner reality and surviving is. Without that life is just the amount of difficulties piled on top of each other. Imagine if you have difficulty and no one trains you or gives you an opportunity to train on what reality is, how to connect your heart, how to get clarification, how to take an accounting of oneself from the difficulties that surround us. And that's the reality of the turuqs when they're teaching tafakkur and teaching contemplation and then opening a line that extends towards humanity by contacting and emailing and then trying to get your guidance. It's all Allah's ni'mat, uh, a, a mercy for humanity because as soon as they have difficulty they should have been trained on how to sit and connect their heart. When they connect their heart they can begin to understand that, Ya Rabbi let me go through my hisab and go through each thing and why is that difficulty coming to me? And they've been trained on how to take an accounting and they go line item, line item where everything is. You know it's like when your books in accounting are not balanced. Anyone with basic schooling and basic business school is taught basic accounting. 
that the, 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 the credit debit they have to match and every field has to match. When something is not equal in an account you take your hisab, you go back and you try to look, where did I not uh, understand what happened? Did I not check something off? Did I put it in the wrong category? And that's what's the hisab and that's what they call taking a hisab and account of ourselves. Is that when things are not going and we know they're not going right, then we're supposed to stay vigilant at night and begin to take our accounting. That what is it that I've done Ya Rabbi, where, where is my account in the wrong field, something has happened and then they're vigilant, vigilant, vigilant over everything until they can find. They find what Allah is not pleased with, they find what Prophet is not pleased with. And if it's not finding something that's not pleased with, they can find what Allah expected more of them. And that's why the difficulty came, Allah expected something more from them. They should have been doing their wazifas, their, their du'as, their awrads, all these practices. And that's what then makes the, the, the test to become survivable and it's no longer a punishment. When you're not meditating, when you're not contemplating, you view the world as just a series of punishments. Just why is this happening? And most people like, really? Why? The shaykh can go line item for you but they don't ever do that because people will run away from the tariqahs. But everybody should take their own hisab that, what is Allah not pleased with? You know, what could I have done better? What, what should I be doing more on a daily basis? When I have that character and have that understanding, every test comes and draws the servant closer to the Divinely Presence because they realize this is with love that Allah is giving them isharat, giving them a test. Allah wants them to pass the test. Allah doesn't test His servant to fail them but they only fail when they don't have the tools and they didn't take the precautions that were necessary. It's funny people are putting out on, on Facebook that, uh, what, what, what does Shaykh say about COVID? What are we supposed to do about the, the, the COVID and, and what are we supposed to recite and, and drink again? And we're for one year, and these are people who have been following all the time, and for one year you're wondering, where were they? When we were talking about ginger, when we were talking about turmeric, when we talked about the vitamins, when we talked about ayat al kursi, hello, where were you? It was not of any importance to you probably, you didn't write anything. So now when the test came, you don't know why you're in difficulty and you're frantically trying to look, where is it, where is it, where is it? And that, that's also a sign because it's a school where the principals are watching, the, the dean, the, the big bosses above are, are watching, how come you don't take the school seriously? And you only, you only take it serious when calamity visits you? then that you're one of those reactive and this we have to put a note, reactive people they're not from an ocean of love yet. Proactive they have muhabbat and love and they do whatever they do out of a love for Allah. They don't want to disappoint Allah so we don't, this is very important to understand, reactive character and proactive character, it shows which ocean are you moving from and stimulated from. Proactive, you're doing it out of love, you don't want to disappoint your Lord, you don't want to disappoint Prophet and you try and you struggle with yourself and you're continuously trying to do good and do good and do good. This is a servant that's on their way to sincerity and love. Then the reactive character is more based on punishment and fear which is completely the opposite ocean of love and muhabbat. That they operate from fear, they operate from punishment coming, difficulty coming, fear that it's going to be a lot worse and then they will begin to do something until one day they just give up entirely and they kind of drift away from everything and surrender themselves into the oceans of difficulty and a series of bad choices. So just by how people are reacting and, and, and moving their lives these shaykhs can tell 
that you're, you're not acting from an ocean of love and trying to please Allah ashamed to displease Prophet So we pray that Allah give us a more proactive approach in life and that to lift ourselves from always just reacting to difficulties but proactive, take your notes, read the du'as. When he says that this du'a is for this, you write it down in your notes. When this, this drink is for this, all of these things. Don't use your head that, you know, my head doesn't think that that's logical. Doesn't matter what logic is. If the shaykh tell you to drink that reality, you drink from it, Allah will make it to have a blessing and a barakah. And you act it on your faith and that's important. Told the story of that world and doctors without borders that had traveled all over the world and they went to a Muslim village and they said that everybody were here, everybody help and they met all these, these Bedouins and they were saying that here we're going to write you prescription and go over there and, and get your medicine. So they were writing prescriptions until they came across one Sufi and he's waiting, smiling and you know very joyful from whatever difficulty he has mm. and that doctor writes a prescription. He takes the prescription, put on his head, he's thankful Allah sent the net mat and he walks away. Then a couple of days later the, the, the doctors are reviewing the people in the village and they see the man again and say, how's everything, did you take your medicine, you look like you're much healthier, everything's good. He said, no I feel fantastic and through the interpreter he's explaining and he said, what happened? He said, I, I took the prescription, I put it in water, I drank it and mashaAllah next day Allah made me better. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's based on faith. Who's the one who heals us anyways? It's not the medicine that heals but it's the faith of the one taking it that Allah will grant them a shifa, Allah will grant them a means in which to be well. Doesn't mean don't take your medicine because you have to because you're not at that level of faith. But these are the story of these awliya that they have such immense faith. That they know Allah's blessing is in everything and Allah by whatever means possible Allah will save them, dress them and bless them. We pray that Allah keep us always in an ocean of love and muhabbat and we do what we do for the love of Allah love of Sayyidina Muhammad love of awliyaullah, love of the holy companions, love of Ahlul Bayt. That whatever we're doing we hope on these holy nights they dress us, they bless us mm. and that they have pity upon our souls from wherever they're watching us. They're asking Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad have pity upon them Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasulul Kareem, dress them and bless them. Take every type of sickness and difficulty away from them. Take care of type of shaykh of the rizq and every type of difficulty coming to them, Ya Rabbi take that away from them, mm -hmm. the of Islam, the lights of Iman and the lights of Maqam al Hassan inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad and Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.